Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout and Interpreter, and just the country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee. And we got a little thunder booming out there, don't we, Sheila? Maybe you got a storm moving in, but I'll tell you what we do have happening is another recipe. And by the way, that's pretty Miss Sheila behind the camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. And she's doing a great job. And I'll tell you what we're going to make today. We're going to make slow cooker beef stew. But you're going to love the way we make it. It's a lot of fun. Come on over here and I'll show you what I'm doing. If we're doing a slow cooker recipe, you're probably wondering why do I got this frying pan out. This is the key. Whether you got chicken breast, a roast, pork, anything that you're going to do in a slow cooker, brown it first and put a nice sear on it because it has better flavor, better texture, and you won't come home from work to a chunk of gray meat in the slow cooker. So we're going to start out. We got some bacon. Let me see if I can turn this down just a little bit. Okay because I'm going to be over here prepping this. we got a little bit of bacon in here, a little bit of cooking oil. Got some chopped up bacon to give us a little more flavor. And then in this bowl, we're going to put in one cup of all-purpose flour. And over here, we're going to add what I thought my dad invented, because when I was a little kid, he cooked everything with salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. And there's a teaspoon of each in here. And don't worry about me rattling off amounts of stuff, because I always put all the descriptions below the video, so you don't have to go to a website. And we're going to put in here one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder. And those are powders, not salts. We want to make sure you use the onion powder and garlic powder. And we're going to whisk this together a little bit, kind of make a little dredge. And I picked up some stew meat from the grocery store. Sheila said the package in there said 1.25 pounds. It's about one and a quarter pounds of that. And we're just going to tumble this around in here. Instead of doing them one at a time, we're just going to get our fingers involved and get that seasoning on there. And we are going to try to shake off the excess a little bit. As we plunk them in there, we do want to shake off the excess flour. Let's get all these in here first. This is going to be delicious beef stew that you can whip up, turn on low, and come home from work, and there it'll be. All right, 1.25 pounds is quite a bit of meat there, isn't it, Sheila? Oh, this, yeah. this chunk's stuck together, so I'm going to hang that on my finger there, put those in. And I'm going to tear this apart so somebody doesn't end up with one big long chunk of beef in their beef stew. Let me see if I can sling some flour all over the place. There we go. All right, now we want to brown this up real good and put a nice crust on it. And we'll be back in just a little bit and show you how far we are along with this. Well now you know me. I change recipes as I go. Cook the beef a lot longer, because once I put the broth in and looked at it, I thought, that doesn't have the color I want. So I took all the meat out, poured the broth in here, and it's delicious. But look at here, all our beef now has got some nice golden color on the chunks. Now we're going to take it back out of the pan and put it in here. You really got to get a good crust on there. In fact, you could even take the meat and put it on the grill. You know, like a, maybe a round steak, grill it up, and then cube it up and put it in there. Who knows? But this is ready to go over there now. I actually pulled this back out of that broth. Did. Sheila did <laughs> with the tongs. All right, Sheila. You, Sheila took the meat out with a little. I helped with that little round whisk baskety thing, oh, yeah. did. didn't I? Yeah. All right, give me credit where credit's due. She'll clean the whole house, and I'll move a rug over and say, there we go, I helped out. Now, let's get this in here. It's got great color, and we'll continue. Now look at our beef, all browned up beautiful in there. So now it's time to add some more goodies. Put some sliced mushrooms in there. What goes good with steak? Mushrooms. And I'm going to use quite a few because they kind of dissolve and shrink down. So maybe about a cup of those guys in there. Now you can take some big carrots and cut them at an angle to get them thin enough to where they'll cook. Or you can buy these nice little baby carrots that already have the thickness of something that would cook great and they're already peeled and it's just I just thought I got to get those guys. I'll dump them in because them will go great as well. 
same thing, about a nice cup of them. Now about a half a cup of celery. You know me, I don't like celery, but Sheila does. So I am going to put it in there, and I got it in some bigger chunks. Instead of real fine diced, I left it in bigger chunks so you'll get a taste of celery. And I love these little red russet potatoes. I'm only going to fill this. I cut up whatever I had laying there for the recipe. But I'm only going to fill this about, oh, 80% full. You don't want to fill a slow cooker too full because it doesn't cook right. Now, before we put in our beef stock, we're going to put in a little can of Hunt's tomato sauce. Now, you can put in tomato paste, but as soon as you mix it up and heat it up, in, either in the frying pan or in here, it turns into sauce anyway. So I kind of like to just get the real thick sauce. I don't have to mess with the paste trying to dig it out of the can. I just use tomato sauce in all the recipes that call for tomato paste. That's just me, but you know me. I like easy peasy stuff. Then, nothing but beef stock. And as I'm filling this, I'm going to tell you, I got some herbs over here. I call them the Simon and Garfunkel herbs because they're, what is it, parsley, thyme, rosemary, and sage. Or so. No, parsley, sage, ro rosemary, and thyme. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. But I'm not going to put that in there until the last hour of the cooking process. And let me tell you something about fresh herbs. Don't use them in a slow cooker because they just cook to death. Use dried herbs. And I'm telling you, dried herbs are best in a slow cooker recipe the last hour of the recipe. And I'm going to go a little bit more. Look at this little carrot taking a ride on my whisk here. All right, he jumped off. I just want to get a cover on this. I'm going to take a little bit more out of this container. I want to get it just over the top, and I think we're pretty close to there. Now we're getting up to about 85, 90% full, and that's really as full as we want to get. We're going to put this on high. I always do this. Put it on high for about the first hour. Then we're going to turn it down to low, and we're going to check on it in about six hours total. One hour on high, five hours on low. Then we'll take a peek in here and see what we will see. All right, it's been one hour on high, four hours on low, and I have not peeked under this lid, but it's time to peek. So come on over, let's take a look, see what we got. Well, this looks almost done, done already. Let's take a look down in here. Oh, man, look what we have happening with the taters and the beef. The beef is just, it's breaking up when I'm scooping on it here, and it's time for our seasoning. And I looked up the song so I didn't goof it up. It's partially sage, rosemary, and thyme. And I only use a half a teaspoon of each. Dry herbs going in there now. Kind of mix them in a little bit. And you know what? I don't want to cook this to death. So I'm only going to give this about 10 minutes to soak in there. And we'll be back to plate up our slow cooker beef stew. Well, I have waited long enough. It's time to get in here and get some of this beef stew. Wow, this turned out really, really good. Goodness gracious. Let's get a few more veggies. Sheila likes a lot of solid stuff in there. When we have soup, she likes mostly meat or whatever it is. And I like the broth. I like a broth of a soup. But she likes more of the of the goodies so you can tell this is going to be my bowl here with a little more broth. I might go down there and rob a couple chunks of beef. There's one right there. Perfect, perfect. All right. Take a look at what we got here. Now you can tell right away which bowl is Sheila's. She likes more meat and taters. I like a little more broth, so she gets the little baby spoon, and I get the bigger spoon over here. And I'll tell you what, this turned out really, really delicious. When the camera was off, we were doing a little sipping of the broth. It is so delicious. I hope you try this recipe. You're going to love it. Slow cooker beef stew. Turned out great. Of course, we're going to modify it a little bit. Sheila loves to sprinkle cheese on top of a hot soup. And I like to take the little hot sauce bottle and give a few little squirts in there, maybe sprinkle in a couple of jalapeno peppers, who knows. But just straight up, it's absolutely terrific. I hope you like this recipe. In fact, if you like our recipes, we hope you subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, share it with all your friends. And how do you subscribe? It's easy.
little shotgun red space will pop up over here in just a little bit. If you click on it, it'll pop up subscribe, put a little check mark. Next to that is a little bell. You got to click on that little bell and put them two little lines next to the bell to be notified about all of our recipes. We hope you do that. We'll put another recipe up, you know, up over here that we hope you really like. Sheila's making faces back there. It's a joke that we were doing earlier. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is this the absolute best slow cooker beef stew you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. I'm going to get even with you after you turn that camera off. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Sheila. You're welcome. Say goodnight, Sheila. Good night, Sheila. All right, time for some beef stew here at the Hall House. See you later. Bye-bye.